You know, it is not often that the calendar flips to November and the weatherman is the most popular guy around the building, but I think that's the case out there today. High temperatures, <laughs> round of applause. High temperatures got into the mid 70s, 75 degrees at the airport, 76 for Ann Arbor. Got me thinking, is this classified as an Indian summer? Now, let me start with this. An Indian summer is an actual defined thing by the American Meteorological Society. It must happen after the first frost. We must have hazy, foggy nights, and there has to be high pressure present. So check, check and check all of these things match up. But there's one thing the Old Farmers Almanac says it has to happen between November 11th and November 20th. And Sandra wasn't the only one thinking the sun looks like it's on fire. Let me explain what's happening about 2000 miles away in northwest Canada, northern Alberta. There are a lot of wildfires in the atmosphere. The way it is set up, the winds way upstairs, the upper level winds are actually carrying the smoke from those fires all the way down to us. So that's the reason that today we have had kind of that hazy look out there. Check this out. The satellite image from one o'clock this afternoon. Things look so smoky in the upper levels of the atmosphere. I had to draw in in the outlines of the state of Michigan. So there's the state. You can see that kind of wispy look there. That's the smoke. Okay, so to show the differences between the old radar system and the new radar system, we're going to do a bit of a demonstration today. And for that, we have some volunteers playing the role of rain. Will be Jessica in today's presentation. Hail will be Jason. Hell yeah. And Ron will be snow. With the way the old radar worked, was the radar would send out a beam, it would hit the precipitation and come right back. And really, no matter what type of precipitation it hit, it would come back the exact same way. That makes it a little bit hard to tell what is what. But with the new radar, the beam will go out, collect more data, and then come back a slightly different way. So as a forecaster, it makes it a bit easier to tell what type of precipitation you're dealing with, helps make for more accurate forecasts. All right, this is very important, and this is the first thing I'm going to say. I do not have snow in the forecast, but I was thinking about it today. I was looking ahead. They pay me to look ahead, so this is what I'm doing here. The average first snow date around the state of Michigan, now obviously up north, it's quite early, mid to late October for a lot of those folks. For us down here in southeast Michigan, it is mid to late November. Again, no snow in the seven day forecast, but I thought when is the average date that we generally see the first snow? So I looked at Detroit specifically November 15th. So then I looked at the calendar and I thought it's only about a week away. November 15th, the average date where we see a little over point one inches of snow. The earliest we've ever seen it was October 12th, 2006. And then I thought when was the first major snow or the first snow that we had last year? November 13th. A case of history repeating itself from just 12 hours ago. Take a look at what's going on right now. Southwest Michigan dealing with some strong showers and thunderstorms. In fact, this yellow color that you see, that's a tornado watch for them. But notice how it is way back over there, even southwest of Kalamazoo and Battle Creek. So this does not include us, but we will see some showers and storms as we move closer to midnight and after midnight. Take a look at what's happening here. Things dry right now. In fact, the sky is still clear, but some of those clouds starting to get a little bit closer. Let's zoom out just a little bit and you can see all of that action again, just back out to the west moving over Lake Michigan. It doesn't look like we're going to see much in the way of severe weather, but we will see rain and we will probably hear a few rumbles of thunder and a few flashes of lightning. Let's really time it out. This is the best tool to show you right now. Fox future cast will run it from now until two o'clock and you can see that blob of rain getting closer. Remember the oranges and the yellows. That's the strong to severe stuff by 2 a.m. It is very close. It then moves right over top of us by 6 a.m. It looks like we're in a bit of a lull. We'll see a few showers, but then it's going to be just that spotty rain. I asked folks, some of the people that posted the snow photos on my Facebook wall last week, I said, go outside and take the exact same picture this week. This is a photo from the exact same backyard last week and this week. Ken sent me this one. How about another one? Mary sent me this one last week, this week. Isn't that crazy? I love these photos. They sent me a whole bunch of them. So uh, I thought they were great. I posted a lot of them on my Facebook page. You can see them all there last week, this week. Isn't that crazy? One week around here, all that snow is melted. 17 inches of snow and howl, all gone. A Facebook friend asked me, Derek, I think September's been a dry month. Has it been that? So I dug into the numbers and here they are. Take a look at the rainfall numbers by month throughout the entire year. September is way at the bottom, 1.12 inches. This puts it as the second driest month that we've seen so far this calendar year. But here's the thing from May to September. Those are typically our really wet months. In fact, September generally is the fourth wettest month that we've seen that we usually see throughout the year. We've only had five real days of rain. And right now we are sitting at the 11th driest September of all time. 
quick science lesson time. Uh, what is a total lunar eclipse? We've been talking about it. It's going on right now. Well, here you go. The sun way out there. The Earth is now in the middle of the moon and the sun. Now, the moon does not have its own light. Of course, it looks bright because it reflects the light off of the sun. But when it gets on the other side of the Earth like that, it doesn't have the direct hits from the sun. However, the sun's rays do bend around the Earth's atmosphere, and that's what's happening literally right now. Three, two, one. Let's go see what happens. Yeah, so in a straight line wind event, I mean, you can get winds in excess of 100 miles an hour. This could be your house and this could be a tree branch. You know, sometimes we ask you, the viewers, to send us pictures on Facebook and Twitter, but occasionally we go out and find them ourselves. And that's what I did with this one here. Virginia posted this picture on the National Weather Service's Facebook page. If you look closely, you can see what's happening here. Snow on the ground, lawn chairs out, Fire going. How's that for a bonfire Michigan style? If a record setting day out there today. The graphic here is going to show you 75, but we actually got to 76 degrees for our high temperature. So that breaks the record from 1987 of 75 degrees. Sunset, of course, was almost about an hour ago. 525 got me thinking about records over the next couple of days. So let's break them down. Could we be setting any more? Answer is probably not. New data is in over the last couple of days. Where do we fall on the warmest Novembers of all time? Well, here's the top five. And if you take yesterday and today, this is the average high and low together. We are now down to number six. We were number two yesterday, but we had two cold days in a row. So now we're down to number six. One more day left in the month, and I think we might slide a little bit farther down that list. That storm is going to stay in the Atlantic. Let me show you what the uh, most updated models say, and you can see these. We call them spaghetti plots. You'll see why in just a second. They kind of look like spaghetti. But uh, now, all of them moving to the east, that is good. We're getting some model consensus here, so this will not look like uh, it's going to make a landfall along the east coast. But again, still with very heavy rains for them, uh, record-breaking flooding for areas like uh, South Carolina and North Carolina. Well, it's not all that bad. Some people like falling asleep to some showers. Now, some thunderstorms, that might be a different story. Here's what we're watching. Sky Tracker picking up on lightning really all across the state, starting to push in. But this is the one I'm watching first, the one just south of Kalamazoo. Typically, things in Kalamazoo take about three hours to travel across, depending on how fast things are moving. I think that seems about right, and that brings the rain to our doorstep about 2 in the morning. So we may see some of those showers. We may hear some of that thunder right about 2 o'clock. Between 2 and 5, I think a pretty decent chance. Now, if we're looking at anything severe, not really. I think it's going to be mainly the showers and the thunderstorms. We could see one or two strong storms, but in terms of severe stuff, I'm not that concerned about it. Here's what's happening. The big picture stuff showing this. There's a warm front just down to the south. As the warm front lifts through, that's what creates that bit of instability. And the warm front's always one that we watch. Now, we also keep a very close eye on the cold front. The cold front's going to be moving through tomorrow, and as it does, it's going to dry out the atmosphere. But it's not going to happen until late in the day tomorrow. That gives us about 24 hours from earlier this afternoon through tomorrow in the afternoon, probably even evening hours, if I'm being honest with you. Take a look at Fox Futurecast. We'll time this out. We'll increase the resolution. We'll pause it at 2 a.m. and you can see some of those storms starting to get close. That's why I said it takes about three hours for it to get here. Between 2 and 5, by 6 o'clock, we start to see things a little bit drier. So as we wake up, we start getting ready for work. We're going to see the wet roads. We may see a branch or two down, uh, but overall it should be mainly dry with some spotty showers following that. And then the spotty showers take us all the way through the afternoon. Here's lunchtime. Here's 6 o'clock. Still with some of that rain out. There. So even through tomorrow evening and dinner time, we've got the rain in the forecast, but then that starts to exit as we move into tomorrow night. Wednesday looking a lot drier. So Tuesday is going to be the wet day. Here's your temperatures. Numbers are in the 70s. They've been mainly in the 70s for a lot of July. And I've had some folks ask me, Derek, this has been a cooler July, hasn't it? Well, I'm here to tell you. Yes, it has 78.2 degrees. That's the average temperature that we've seen average high temperature for the month of July. Usually we're closer to 84, so we're about six degrees below average. Even last year, which felt like kind of a cooler summer was warmer than the uh, month of July. 81.6 degrees. So yes, it has been a little bit cooler, but we're going to hope to add some uh, degrees into the forecast as we move into the weekend. 69 degrees overnight tonight. The rain and storms returning, of course, after midnight, and then the scattered rain and thunderstorms continue through the afternoon. Highs tomorrow near 82, and then at 78 and cooler for Wednesday and Thursday. Into the weekend, though, 86 and 87.